Hello everyone, back to you to today's first video. We're going to have a look at the weather next four weeks across the UK and the rest of Europe as well with the ECMDF uh, extended 30-day uh, model. So uh, we're at the Hungarian Met Office uh, for this. Big thank you to them for supplying us with the charts. Uh, we can't see mean cell pressure or 500 millibar height anomalies, but you can get a rough idea what model is predicting from its temperature and precipitation on anomalies. So that's what we're going to do for today's first video. Coming up later on this afternoon, we'll have your regular week 10 day video update including all of the usual features but we're going to start off with the week one temperature anomaly for uh, europe and this is taking us from the 21st through to 27th of october so it was a pretty warm scene actually across uh, many parts of uh, Europe, particularly on the eastern side. So over here across western parts of Russia and into far east of Europe, it is uh, very warm. Temperature anomalies are 6 to 10 degrees above average there, exceptionally mild if not warm on the eastern side of Europe more widely through many of these sort of central areas as well uh, pushing all the way over towards Germany and eastern France we see temperature anomalies of three to six degrees above average and then one to three degrees above average through southern parts of Scandinavia for example in towards the low countries as well. It's a bit different on the far western side of Europe, so for the UK, for Ireland, for the west of France, I mean, down into uh, Spain and Portugal, we are actually a little bit uh, cooler than average, a little bit uh, below average by around uh, one degree through many areas of the UK and Ireland, and even cooler than that through Spain and Portugal, going down to um, one to three degrees below average there. And in the very far north of Scandinavia as well, it's also a little bit below average as it is uh, across Iceland. As far as the Mediterranean is concerned, uh, it's a bit cooler now, as I say, through Spain, Portugal. That does extend into the central basin of the Med around the Balearic Islands of Mallorca, Minorca and Ibiza. But going further east of that, it generally is warm and average, so Corsica, Sardinia, above average, Italy is above average, over the Adriatic, into the Balkans, I mean, down towards Greece and Turkey, warmer than average through those uh, regions. So away from from the far west, uh, northwest, and southwest of Europe, it is uh, a really quite a warm scene in the week ahead. I move through to precipitation. So uh, mixed bag, really. A lot of dry weather on this eastern side of Europe, where it's warmest. It looks like it's also pretty dry as well in the east of Europe and going in towards western parts of Russia. Those dry conditions extend down into the eastern and southeastern part of the uh, Mediterranean. Uh, through the central part of the Mediterranean, though, it looks very, very wet uh, indeed. So if you are planning a Mediterranean holiday to these island areas like Mallorca and Ibiza and Corsica, Sardinia, Malta, all of those areas look very, very much wetter than average, substantially and significantly above average. No doubt a lot of thunderstorms popping off down there in uh, the week ahead. And then over towards Spain and Portugal, well, eastern parts of Spain looking quite wet, western parts of Spain into Portugal looking quite dry. Going further northwards, we see that uh, southern France is wetter than average, particularly around the Côte d'Azur, and then as we head up towards the northern parts of France, it's uh, it's a much drier scene through there. Those drier conditions extend up into England and Wales. Anyway, it looks a little bit wetter through Scotland and Ireland. Uh, low countries, much of Germany, dry on average. And then we go back into those drier and average conditions through the eastern part of Europe where we've got those very warm temperatures as well. Up to Scandinavia, again, a bit of an all-south split. So uh, northern parts of Scandinavia, above average uh, precipitation. Some of that will be snowfall, of course. Southern parts of Scandinavia more on the drier side. Overall, most parts of Europe are looking quite dry, but we do have those very specific, uh, really wet areas, especially through that central bowl of the Mediterranean. Week 2 temperature anomalies, which is week 44 for the year, taking us from the 28th of October to the 3rd of November, looking a lot cooler. Huge change from week 1 to week 2. All of those warmer than average temperature anomalies have gone, basically. They've uh, shifted up towards Iceland, also still a little bit down towards Greece. But most other parts of Europe are actually looking cooler than average now, below average temperatures as we end October and begin November. So 
So that is a very, very significant change, especially for these eastern parts of Europe in just a few days. A dramatic plunge in temperature, therefore, is likely going from something like 6 to 10 degrees above average in the east of uh, Europe to um, kind of like 3 to 6 degrees below average uh, across not just East Europe, but many parts of Europe too. So really significant change in the weather on the way. So widely from Western Russia over towards the west of Europe, it's uh, below average. For the UK and for Ireland, we're sort of average to a little bit below average. Actually, the coolest temperature anomalies appear to be um, further east of, uh, uh, of the UK. And then down in to Mediterranean again looks quite a cool scene really it's a little bit warm and average still as I say uh, across the far south of Italy and in towards Greece but basically most parts of Mediterranean are going close to or possibly hinting being a little bit below average change as far as precipitation is concerned as well so substantially drier than average in this western and northwestern part of europe so for for, for france for the uk for ireland uh the low countries um netherlands and uh, germany up to denmark into the south of the scandinavian peninsula we see that uh, it is significantly drier than average through those regions so obviously high pressure looks like it's going to be out to the northwest of uh europe Down down into Mediterranean still hints at being quite wet here through the central areas. So again, more thunderstorms likely through the central bowl of Mediterranean. And over towards the eastern side of Europe, close to average there with the uh, temperature anomaly there. So um, the precipitation anomaly, I should say, over on the eastern side of uh, Europe. But it looks more unsettled compared to what we have in week one. Cooler and more unsettled for the east part of Europe, definitely. And um, we're into week three, which, of course, is week 45 for the year. But yeah, it really is getting on now. Uh, this takes us from the 4th through to the 10th of uh, November. Again, we see quite a cold scene being forecast here through most parts of uh, Europe. So down into the Mediterranean, temperature anomalies there are around average from west to east, so from Spain, Portugal in the west to uh, Greece and Turkey in the east. Average temperature anomalies. But go further northwards, anywhere from like uh, the Alps northwards or the Balkans northwards, it looks below average with the temperature. So this is quite a cold early part to November you have to say, coming up through many parts of uh, Europe, temperature anomalies from France over to west of Russia, widely between around 1 and 3 degrees below average. UK and Ireland is a little bit below average as well, not as much as those more inland parts of Europe, but nevertheless still uh, on the uh, cold of an average side. I mean, up to Scandinavia, again, it's not as below average. Actually, most parts of central and northern Scandinavia are close to average. Um, but it does look quite a cold scene, I have to say, through many parts of Europe through this early part of uh, November. What we would average up across Iceland, perhaps that would hint at a little bit of northern blocking setting up. Uh, and precipitation-wise, well, now the scene is starting to weaken, as it usually does by week three. So uh, we still see hints, though, of it being quite wet down through the Mediterranean. So more showers, thunderstorms, possibly longer spells of rain down in the Meg, going further northwards. If anything, we're hinting at being rather drier than average, I would have thought, through most parts of central and northern Europe against a weakening signal, but you can see all these sort of uh, tanned coloured uh, areas just here and a little bit round here as well. Just indicative of the fact that the model is, I would have thought, expecting quite a lot of high pressure to be seen sitting across northern and western parts of Europe. But that's a cold high, it's a cold ridge. So temperatures are cold, but it is rather on the drier side. And then we finish up in week four for our forecast period, which is week 46 for the year, taking us from the 11th to the 17th of November. Much weaker signals uh, now. So most parts of Europe have gone into those white colours, which is either average or more likely just no signal. The model hasn't got a signal at this point. Looks a little bit warmer than average uh, in that southeast part of the Med still. Looks warmer than average to Iceland. 
So again, possibly hinting that the broad pattern is continuing even into the second half of November. It's a little bit cooler than average, perhaps, through parts of France, down to Spain and Portugal. But overall, those signals are too weak to be able to draw anything definitive. And uh, I think we just say that in week four, the signal for temperature is too weak. As far as precipitation is concerned, again, it possibly does hint at still being a broad pattern, even into the second half of the month. So down in the med, it's a weak signal, yes, but it does indicate that it could be a bit wetter than average through that central bowl of the med. Going further north into non parts Europe, just a few of these uh, sort of tan-coloured areas indicate it's a little bit drier in a few places. But basically, the map has gone white, so that is either average or no signal. As it's week four, it is likely to be the fact that the model doesn't have a signal. So I think by turning it through to the middle of uh, November, we really have to say that the signals are too weak to be able to uh, forecast anything definitive. Uh, but it definitely looks like the first half of November is shaping up to be quite cold now across many parts of Europe, which is quite a big change on what we've had recently. We've had a lot of warm weather over the past few weeks across uh, Europe, so um, you know, something colder is quite a change. And uh, it does look like it'll be a fairly cold start to uh, first half, I suppose, to November. Relatively dry across the northern parts of Europe. Of course, if it's cold, it tends to be dry because uh, cold air... Um, holds less moisture really than warm air but what precipitation does fall particularly through northern parts of europe so through scandinavian areas in particular and probably down into baltic regions what precipitation does fall could be falling as snow uh through this first half of november so early winter perhaps through some parts of the uh, of uh, northern europe in particular down into the mediterranean it looks much more unsettled so temperatures will be a bit warmer down there yes but the price to pay for that could well be an increase in showers thunderstorms and longer spells of rain so lively couple of weeks to come i think down in the mediterranean for the uk it looks like it's going to be relatively cool really as we're going into the end of october and through the first week or two of november and we'll have more on that for you of course in today's uh second video update which will be coming up this afternoon it's just a snapshot of what the model is showing, uh, so it could all look very different next week. Any forecast beyond five to seven days comes with a huge health warning, but that's what it's showing this week anyway. Quite a cold first half to November through many parts of Northern Europe. Right, we'll be back later on with your week's 10-day video updates, so come back for that then. But that's all for now, and thanks for watching.